Hey, it's me, your boy, Autor Deluxe. Um, I want to put out just a little little baby video because my consumption of movies is probably going to go down a little bit due to the NHL playoffs, which start tomorrow, uh, if this goes out on time. So, probably going to watch less movies, uh, at least a little bit, for probably a month or two, depending on how it pans out. If my team gets knocked out in a best of five series, thanks COVID, uh, I could, my interest could start waning uh, within days. But... I'm really looking at this as a big opportunity to watch a shit ton of hockey, no obligations, no job, no significant other, thank God. Uh, it's, it's, it's a horrible life. But no, yeah, no anything. So yeah, I can just watch hockey till my eyes bleed. So I probably am going to do that. So movie intake might go down a little bit, but I did want to kind of recap July. Um, I watched about 40 movies. Um, Paris, Texas, you guys really like that? People really like that? I, that had been on my list for years. I finally watched Paris, Texas. Visually fucking stunning, like visually incredible. There's some great shots, great po color palette. That Harry Dean Stanton performance is fucking, uh, didn't do anything for me. That story didn't do anything for me. The end of the big sequences between the glass didn't do anything for me. I really, really kind of shocked. You guys let me down. And by you guys, I mean like film Twitter and just movie people that have been telling me I need to watch Paris, Texas for 10 years on Tumblr. Uh, yeah, not good, didn't like it. Also recently watched The Rental that came out this year, uh, Alison Brie directed by Dave Franco, her husband, some Franco, not James. Um, that had a, that had so much potential and by the end of it I was I was wishing that it was better because it it could have been really really good, but it ended up just being kind of a forgettable horror movie and it it bums me out because I think it either could have spawned a really good franchise or it'll there will be a sequel because they leave it wide open for a sequel. There could be a sequel where a different director, a different writer gets a hold of it and makes it way better. Because that premise is incredible. It's a great premise. Alison Brie is pretty good in it. Other than that, the dialogue was horrible. The dialogue was cringeworthy. Uh, Artie, the strongest man in the world, is in it. Uh, Toby Huss, I think is his name. He, he's, a, he's a good actor. I like him. He pops up in horror things here and there these days. But... It wasn't bad. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say it's bad, but I wouldn't make it a rental if you pay money to you don't pay money to see it. Wait till it comes out on a plane or ne oh, and also I saw Badlands. I'm trying to fill the plug the holes in my Terrence Malick viewing. Uh, I don't want to say Badlands was bad, lands, but at, you can't when you reverse engineer his filmography, it's never going to work. You can't go from Tree of Life, which is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen in my life. You can't go back 40 years and expect this amazingness. I like to give uh, directors benefit of the doubt with their debut. And there's a lot of potential there, but it doesn't go in any of the directions I expect from Terrence Malick. It doesn't have that like uh, quiet spirituality. It doesn't have the like swooping amazing shots. It does have some breathtaking shots. That story didn't really do anything for me. Performances are okay. Uh, the main character is very unlikable, but I think that's the, obviously the fucking point. But yeah, Badlands. Nah, it's not the Tree of Life. But if you go and expecting the Tree of Life, you're not. Of course, you're not gonna like it. So, eh, it's okay. So evidently, like time plus unemployment times criteria on sale equals uh, my in my uh, so my inability to have self-control it's got to come out somewhere it's got to come out somewhere so used to be alcohol drank myself nearly to death now I just eat myself to death I'm trying to get a handle on that uh, but the other way it's kind of slipping through right now is buying blu-rays I've been going fucking crazy for whatever reason in the pandemic people are putting criterions on eBay like crazy but the Criterion sale at Barnes & Noble, which I believe is about to end, has been going on for the last couple weeks. So I do have a little bitty haul. I want to show everybody my little haul uh, just because it's a way to talk about movies because I'll have them physically in my little hand. Uh, so I got this one. I got Marriage Story. This one, I actually haven't popped it in yet, but the presentation is great. It's got like their little notes to each other. I'm not going to pull them out, but they have their little notes to each other from the end of the movie. And I'm really excited to watch this one. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Marriage Story, great movie, probably my favorite of last year. Uh, I got Love Streams. I got this. This is a blind buy because I have all the other Cassavetes uh, uh, Criterions, so I decided I need Love Streams, so I got it. Uh, excited to watch that. I actually watched Gloria recently. I was not a big fan of Gloria, but that's kind of more of a commercial movie. I think when Cassavetes is 
doing his own thing, it's uh, it's better. Uh, also, speaking of Cassavetti, he's got Husbands. Watched this recently, really liked it. Decided to catch it on sale. Peter Falk is great in this. Ben Gazzara is great in this. Cassavetti himself is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't remember how I reviewed it. I think I said it was too long, which it is. But there, there are good things in here, and like I said, I have that Cassavetti's box set, so I gotta have them all on my shelf, or I have a panic attack, and I might die. Uh, also, I got Day Trippers. Day Trippers is really funny. I really like it. Uh, it feels like it's in the vein of, like, Seinfeld and uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Just very 90s, very New York, very uh, quirky, funny, indie. Really good. I guess it's the guy, the director. I, I mean, I should know this stuff, but the director went on, Greg Matola went on to do uh, Super Bad and a couple other comedies. And also I got The Driller Killer, not a Criterion, I got this Arrow. Um, I didn't even like this movie that much, but it had a really cool slipcase and it didn't come with it, so I didn't get the fucking slipcase. So, I mean, this movie's okay. I like Abel Ferreira, I really like um, Miss 45, but that's kind of hard to find on Blu-ray. I haven't looked recently, but it used to be hard to find on Blu-ray. Definitely prefer Miss 45 over Driller Killer, but I'm going to give this another watch, and, I mean, if I hate it, I can sell it. Also, recently, I got this bad boy. Recently, I got this bad boy, the uh, Midsommar, Midsummer Director's Cut. Uh, this thing's beautiful, and I'm happy I got it. So I see this online quite a bit, that the A24 store is, like, the supreme of, like, boutique Blu-ray. Because they, I mean... Look, look at this. Look at this thing. Like, you can't bind that. And it's it's just the movie. Like, you just put it in. There's no extras or anything. A lot of people are on Reddit crying that they feel duped. I don't feel duped because, I mean, look, this... Like, I, I got it for this. I got it for this sexy little artwork. And you got the forward by Scorsese. So, I mean, I don't feel duped. But I do feel like a bit of a dumbass because I accidentally bought it on 4K. And I don't have a 4K Blu-ray player. So... I can't watch it. Ended up downloading it. Uh, so basically I spent $50 for a booklet. But it's a cool booklet and it'll look good on my shelf. But it'll kind of also look fucking stupid on my shelf because uh, what what is this, boys? And like I said, just in the pandemic, spending money, hemorrhaging money, I decided it's time. It's time to buy this bad boy. Uh, I don't even really give that much of a shit about Godzilla, but this thing's great. Like, it just looks cool as fuck, and I mean, I wouldn't expect the channel to kind of go to Godzilla content for the next foreseeable future or anything like that, but I'm going to be a Godzilla fan now. I'm going to be a Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's like, what am I going to talk about? Like, it's fucking Godzilla. You can just kind of enjoy these, kind of watch the monster parts, maybe text a buddy or two while the dialogue's going on. But I guess these aren't dubbed, and a lot of the nerds are crying that they're not dubbed. It's, it's subbed, not dubbed. So, yeah, this thing is just beautiful. But, I mean, like, what kind of shelf? What kind of shelf am I going to need for these? But, uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. That's exactly where I'm at, to quote Ween. And... Yeah, so the content might stream a little less in the next month, but it might not. I don't know. I, I really, it really all hinges on this hockey thing. It really could be uh, three and done, or it could not. I don't know. Uh, stay hydrated. Follow me on. I think I finally got this figured out. If you go into Letterbox and you type in Autor Deluxe, I come up. I come up as Autor Deluxe and at Ween, but I think I'm going to stop saying the at Ween with three E's. Autor Deluxe. Look up Autor Deluxe under members. You'll find me. You'll see my beautiful face. And also follow me on Instagram at Autor Deluxe and follow me on Twitter at Autor Deluxe. The Twitter is almost defunct. I barely use it. But if you want to sub and sub some more, I might start using it. So fair warning. These are weird times. These are weird times for movies. Nothing's coming out. So I mean, what am I going to tweet that's going to like catch on? I don't know. Twitter's kind of dead. Uh, thank you. Stay hydrated.